Now, we ha is, is, is a resignation enough? That's the first question. Is the resignation enough? Well, I should think so. If he has resigned his left office, um, I don't see what the CCT is going to do further than that. Um, the people that were, have been tried for similar offenses in the past, what used to happen to them is that they would give them a fine and ask them to regularize their position with the um, Code of Conduct Bureau within a certain time or they will leave office. So if he has already left office, um, the arguments in the court become academic, really, as far as I'm concerned. But people may hold um, alternative views. And the, the charge of false assets declaration cannot hold any further because uh, the CCT um, got evidence that the, the bureau itself did not verify the assets that were declared. So it cannot be false if it has not been verified. The only thing that is left before the um, tribunal is to decide whether he failed to declare his assets as and when due. So we do have a resignation now. And then we have a 20-man group under the aegis called the Justice Reform Project saying that as far as they are concerned, and these are senior advocates of Nigeria, as far as they are concerned, resignation is not enough. So what's the way forward? What would be, if resignation is not enough, what other punitive measures would be legally allowed in this situation? Well, I don't know what else they want, because if you are saying that resignation is not enough, then you have to accuse him of a larger crime. You, maybe you, you say he's told, he received bribes, but that is not before us. You don't have that accusation before us. So he has resigned. If you do not, the, what, the, the worst that the Code of Conduct Tribunal can do to you is to ask you to vacate your office, which he has already done, without the tribunal itself saying so. So if they are saying that it is not enough, then perhaps they are saying that EFCC should bring more facts that since he has left office, he can now be tried in the normal um, course of uh, a criminal procedure, um, like any other citizen, if he has taken bribes, if he has um, um, stolen money or whatever. I don't know. What Help us understand. So vacation of an office or an instruction from the Code of Conduct Tribunal to vacate office would be sufficient legal punitive measures for what offenses now as far as this case goes? For failure to de um, de declare his assets. That would be sufficient yes, enough? Yes. Now we have the same um, justice reform project saying that they are asking actually in effect that the anti-grafts um, exercises should be extended across the judiciary to other judges. You had some thoughts on what the NJC could be recommending or could be recommended to do? Uh, well, yes, there's, there's a lot for the argument to say that there's a lot of corruption within the Nigerian judiciary and it, it has to be dealt with if we are going to go forward as a nation. But it has to be done constitutionally. My, my grouse with the way the CJN was treated is that the constitution was set aside in dealing with him. Section 292 of the Constitution was not adhered to in, in dealing with him. And I hope that in the very near future, a court will make a pronouncement on this again. And uh, having said that, the NJC itself has to be up to its, its duties. They have to act speedily when petitions are brought before them. They have to be decisive. And they have to stop this perception of giving judges a soft landing when they are found guilty of abuse of office. Now, if the, if the judiciary does not cleanse itself, it lends itself to such extrajudicial means and extra um, um, constitutional means of cleansing the judiciary of, of um, corruption, which is exactly what we have seen with the CGN. Because Section 292 doesn't provide for the CGN to be suspended in the manner that he was suspended. So perhaps the executive was frustrated that the judiciary is not cleansing itself, so they had to take steps, but it's not right. So at that sitting today, whether or not the CJN has resigned, that sitting will hold today as scheduled. What so, do you anticipate will happen? Well, um, I cannot preempt the judge uh, because um, the, the matter is sub judice, so I have to be careful about what I say. But all I know is that the charge that may, um, that's, that is before that the CTC, um, um, Code of Contract Tribunal, right now is the, the failure to declare assets, because I know that you cannot prove falsification of assets if you did not verify the assets itself. And the, the, the prosecution witness from the Code of uh, Conduct uh, Bureau itself said that they did not verify the assets as declared by the CGM. So that charge fails. 
Now, while still talking at trending legalities within the Nigerian situation at the moment, we have um, latest from the political front, the flag bearer of the opposition party, People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, releasing data and saying, in effect, that according to INEC records, uh, they have a one million margin of victory. That's according to the records he has released. Are there legal implications of this release of data? Well, first of all, the, he's required to plead his uh, facts before the court. Um, the, the purpose of pleadings in, in, in tribunal or a court is to give your opponent advance notice of the kind of evidence that you're going to prefer before the court. So he's required by law. He didn't hold a press conference to um, declare this to the people. What he did was that he filed it at the tribunal. And because these are public documents, the press have access to them. That is how we know the contents of the documents. Now, if you're saying that um, INEC declared a wrong person as the, as the winner of the election, you have to t um, explain to the tribunal the process by which they arrived at the wrong conclusion. That is what um, Atiku Abubakar is trying to do. Now, I mean, this is 2019, so <laughs> we are in the world of computers and servers. So uh, an essential component of his case has to be electronic evidence. He's released the IP addresses of the servers. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to that now. Now, tell me, do you think the courts will decide Nigeria's president from the trajectory of events that you have been seeing? Yes, I inevitably, because the matter is before them, and it's not a, a moot matter, it's a real issue. They must decide it. They must decide it one way or the other. We've got under 44 days or thereabout to May 29. It, the day that um, the, uh, the declared winner is sworn in is really not relevant. Uh, the important thing is that the election um, petition is decided within one 180 days of its being filed. Now, once that is done, if it's, whether it's after uh, um, uh, Buhari is sworn in for a second term, if he's found not to be the proper person, he will vacate office at, at whenever the um, tribunal um, gives his verdict. But if he's found to be the, the, the rightful person, he continues. So, but they will decide it. We'll wait to see how that goes. Thank you very much for your time and thoughts.